in Jesus mighty name want to deeply appreciate God for this privilege appreciate my father and my mother it's a privilege I will never be abused not me used I strongly believe that somebody's story will change yeah. we are blessed with the first one and I know this one will also be a blessing yeah. Heavenly Father speak to us to your word this hour let each one have an encounter with your word yeah. encapsulate every word with your power that would enter our hearts to bring a change. In Jesus' mighty name. You may be seated. Give me a big hand. Praise the Lord. Every time I come here, I don't know where to start from because there are altars you climb, even if they call you 50 times, you have to behave yourself the 50 times. So I don't take coming here for granted. It's only a privilege. Even if I don't preach, I will still be fulfilled. Redeemed to flourish in hard times is the theme. And my subtopic is covenant security in hard times. Covenant security in hard times. Now hear this before I go to say anything. We are taught... Prosperity by our father himself in Bible school. He started the prosperity teaching. So if the headquarters of prosperity will teach you, you believe that you will succeed. And I heard him say, the first time I ever heard him, he put his hand like this and said, I can never be poor. And when he said it with authority, I said, how can a man speak like this? Because where I was coming from, they never preached that way. He said, I can never be poor. Have I ever asked any of you for a dime? I said, how can somebody talk like this? So I too said, I can't be poor. <laughs> but poverty did not leave. My confessing it did not change my situation. I said, I can't be poor. But deep down in me, I knew that I was still soliciting, begging with style. <laughs> the worst form of deception is self-deception. If you don't know it, you don't know it. And what you don't know, don't pretend to know. So I, I discovered that I don't really know this thing yet. I was already seeing miracles. I've, as a brother, I prayed for somebody to drop crushes. But when it comes to money, I didn't get it. Because malaria is worse than malaria. <laughs> so I told myself, discover the secret of this man. So I picked his book, Breaking Financial Hardship, locked myself for seven days. And I said, God, show me the secret of kingdom wealth that you showed to my father. And when I encountered light, this time was not a statement of just talking. I now knew the secret. So out of the things I've learned from him, I'm going to share with you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> now hear this and hear me well. Hardship it's a scriptural agenda that cannot be averted globally, but can be avoided personally through covenant practice. Based on where our bishop Abiyo read in Isaiah 60 verse 2, you all know that hardship cannot be scripturally averted globally. It's, it's a global problem. But personally, you can avoid it if you practice what the Bible says. Those who dismiss God's financial method will suffer man's financial crisis. I pray that before this Shiloh 2023 be over, you will have a new story to tell. Yeah. I don't have is the mentality of a man who does not want to come out of hardship. Hear me, people of God. I will share with the factors that determines your covenant security in hard times. Some of them, because you can't take all. What are the factors? Number one, be conscious of your exemption status in Christ. I said, be conscious of your exemption status in Christ. In 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9, it says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, 
Yet for your sakes it became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Redemption has moved you and I from the realms of scarcity to realms of plenty. Through the sacrifice of Jesus, every child of God is entitled to supernatural exemptions from all negative currents of life. The covenant of God puts us in that place where our case is positively different. In a time of famine, the Bible said Isaac experienced God's supernatural exemption as he became exceptionally prosperous. He had possessions in recession. Genesis 26, 12 to 14, and Galatians 4 to this 8. He said, if ye be, then it means that whatever Isaac saw, you and I can also see it. So no matter what's happening in the world, your own case will be different in the name of Jesus. That amen is too weak. There was scarcity in Egypt, in the same Egypt in Goshen, where the people of God were, there was plenty. So redemption is the sponsor of abundance. During COVID, based on the teachings I've heard from my father, during COVID, during the lockdown, people were complaining. Our church had the highest income during COVID. And no, we are not doing physical church. Your mentality defines your dignity. So you must see it, think it, and believe exemption to enjoy exemption. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is it. You are not born again to suffer what the world is suffering. You must see that your own case is different from others. And it shall be so to someone who believes it. The 12 spies... When Moses sent them, the whole 12 acknowledged they were giants. Remember, the whole 12 acknowledged, but 10 had faith in the giants, 2 had faith in God. 2 only believed that God can make it. 10 believed their case was hopeless. Nobody saying there's no hardship, that would be self-deception. But in the midst of hardship, what are you seeing? Everybody goes to the same market. But those who know the truth don't suffer what others suffer. You will not be a victim of suffering. <laughs> Number two factor, embrace the love factor. Embrace the love factor. I use Mark 12 because Matthew 20, 22, 37 down, did not put strength. So I would use Mark 12, 30, 31. It said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. But he added something with all thy strength. Mark did not put strength. This is the first commandment. Then thou shalt love your neighbor as thyself. It puts strength because whatever makes you who you are, use it to love God. Your strength can be your position. Your strength can be your political power. It's only to use that place that makes you who you are to love God. You are not a lover. Love is the foundation for all covenant practices. Anything done with that love will never produce. Seek you from the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And everything in the world is pursued. Shall be added. So those who seek God don't sink in life. You will never sink. Yeah. First Corinthians 13 verse 3. It was also quoted. So I'm not going to spend time on that. And do I bestow all my goods to feed the poor? And do I, I give my body to be born? And I have no charity. It profited me nothing. Now hear these people of God. True love results in the investment of your time, your efforts, and your resources in God and his kingdom. Because your love for God will make you place high value on him and his kingdom. Let me say this to you. 
If they preach to you before you give, then you don't love. Ask me why. Love identifies opportunity and souls towards it. Who preached to you before you buy clothes for your wife? Where did they preach before you bought car for yourself? So it's in the God that they have to preach to you. You don't love him. You hear me? When a man sees a wife, cloth is torn. He goes to buy cloth if he loves her. Does she have to preach to him? So can't you see my cloth torn? So wait, they didn't preach to us. You don't love him. When you love him, they don't preach to you. And love without giving is original fake. Now, let me tell you a practical thing. You tell your wife every day you come, you say, sweetheart, I love you. You bought a car for yourself. You say, I love you. I just bought a car. <laughs> she will look at you. <laughs> you come and say, sweetheart, I so love you. Look at my suits. You come the third day, you say, sweetheart, I love you so much. Shoes. She will say, my friend, stop. You don't love me. <laughs> so all this love we are singing, like choir, you know they can sing very well in every church. I love you, Lord. <laughs> and they can even preach the love. If giving is not involved, that love is fake. Original fake. Are you hearing me? So waiting that they have to preach before you give is not true love. <laughs> that way you will come out of hardship. Lie, lie. <laughs> but today somebody's suffering will end. Shout a better Amen. You find out that even in natural way you love, giving to the person, you don't struggle. Do you know? If anybody struggles to give to you, he never loves you. Who you love, even when the person stops, you'll still be giving. But who you don't love, you give reasons. You say, you don't mind, I don't, my food is... Uh, small few when your neighbors are coming, you even hide the food you're eating because you don't love the person. You say, don't worry, you're too worried. Every time you come visit me. Number three. Praise the Lord. They said I used to be very fast, so I think I should take it gently. I don't used to be very fast in my own place, but when I come here, I have to be fast and leave. <laughs> Amen. So that I can come next day again. <laughs> so don't, don't blame me. Amen. Praise the Lord. You won't blame me, eh? Where my father preaches, I preach. What, what am I displaying here? All this I preach, I learned from him. So what will I come here to display? Just write your notes and go and do it. Amen. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Number three. In fact, obey the law of seed time and harvest. Obey the law of seed time and harvest. As long as this earth remained, seed time and harvest shall not what? Cease. How many of you believe that this book is real? You believe it? Then why are you afraid of giving? God is not a man that he should lie. If God says your seed must produce harvest, then don't doubt him. It pains him when you doubt him. It pleasures him when you trust him. He said, as long as you drop a seed, harvest is sure. Genesis 8.22 and Numbers 23 verse 19. Stinginess, not just the root of financial pressure. It is those who plant their seeds faithfully that will reap harvest bountifully. Let me say this to everyone. You can never come out of hard times except you are a giver. Do you hear me? <laughs> if you are not a giver, there's nothing. If you like sing the best song, you will never come out of hardship. Sweep the whole church, you will come out of hardship. He says, seed time and harvest, not sweeping time and harvest. You will get the blessing of sweeping church or a sanctuary keeper. But uh, this thing, you don't get it. <laughs> See this thing? 
I've not seen that most people who are very good in church, when it comes to this, they don't have it. It says seat time. It didn't say prayer time. That's how many prayer warriors are poor. Let me say to you this to you, brothers and sisters. To cry and give is not a symbol of true love. You will not cry for anything, but when you want to give, you start crying. <laughs> I'll show you from the Bible. Turn with me to Malachi chapter 2, verse 13. Some of you, it's only offering time, you start crying. He said, this have you done again. Yeah, God tell you. Covering the altar of your Lord with tears. With weeping. And with crying, crying out. In so much that he regarded not the offering anymore. Or received it with goodwill at your hand. When God gave Jesus Christ, he did not cry. When Abraham gave Isaac, he did not cry. When Isaac sold in the land, he did not cry. Stop giving offering with a frowning face. He said, God loveth a cheerful gift. <laughs> so Corinthians 9 verse 7. So when you are giving, put a smile on your face. Because your seed is the voice that your financial future obeys. You can take a seed to meet any need. The exchange price of your future harvest is your present seed. And if you don't like the harvest you're getting, then check your seed. You have to change it. Because every farmer gets the harvest based on the seed he sows. And the best time to sow is during hardship. Isaac sowed in the land when there was farming. Let me tell you this. Practical. The best time to give is now. I did something very practical. This period where people are complaining, I increased my offering. From what I used to give, I doubled it and my income tripled. Because God can't lie. If you want to give, this is the best time to give. In the natural, when things are tough, that's when farmers plant more. True? This is not a time to hoard. This is a time to give, to increase. Everybody was hoarding. Isaac sold when there was hardship. This is not the time to say things are tough. No. No. You know why? Giving is the provoker of the blessing. Our father this morning talked about the blessing. When you are a giver, you provoke the blessing. And the blessing attracts blessings. He said, bring you all the tithe for instance to the store that we meet my house and prove me that if I will not open it and will pour you out what? A blessing. So, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and added what? So, so, if I want to attract the blessing of God, I must give to God in my tithe and my offerings and then the blessing rests upon me with no devil can destroy me no matter the hardship. Malachi 3.10 and Proverbs 10.22 now, when Abraham and Lot were, Abraham just laughed. He said, Lord, choose anywhere you like. Why did he say to Lord, choose anywhere? He said, what I carry, you don't carry. I carry the blessing, Lord, you don't carry the blessing. So choose anywhere. Anywhere you drop me, I will prosper. Because what I'm carrying, you don't have. Abraham had the blessing because he was a tighter, faithful tighter. Lot never had the blessing. So he said, anywhere you choose, choose. When a man carries the blessing, drop him anywhere in hard times, he will prosper. <laughs> Let me say a practical thing to you. When we finished Bible school and I wanted to go to Podagoth, one of my colleagues called me and said, look, listen, there are only two places people prosper, Lagos and Abuja. I said, why? He said, Tell me which other place will prosper. You want to go to Padakot? Oh boy, come down first. Start in Lagos. When you prosper in Lagos, then you go to Padakot. And I believe them because I had no knowledge. But when knowledge comes, I say, no, if, I've, if it's working in Lagos, it will work anywhere. When I got the secret of what my father said, he used, you know, don't ever confess what you have not proved in your life. Otherwise, Confucius will just follow you everywhere. Don't just get up and say nothing. I'm not going to survive. If you don't know it, you don't know it. Oh. 
Are you hearing me now? I didn't know before. So I, I, I was following my father to say I can't be poor. Poverty was still chasing me left and right. <laughs> but when I got it, now everybody's saying Panakot is an oil place. Eh? If you don't, if you, anybody hearing me all over the world, it's okay, my father, look at me. I may prove that what my father is teaching me is real. There's no two ways it's real. It's no matter where you are, if you carry the blessing, it will work anywhere. But you can't carry the blessing onto a faithful tighter. I'll open you the windows of heaven and pour you out what? Okay. You're praying for a blessing when you're not a tighter. <laughs> that one, that, that prayer is not one kind, no? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. May the blessing answer to someone in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number four. I'm going to shout number four because about my greatest secret. Understand the place of the prophet. Understand the place of the prophet when it comes to covenant practice. He said, believe the Lord your God shall be established. But believe his prophet so shall he prosper. Second Chronicles 20, 20. In the covenant, a prophet plays a key role for your prosperity in hard times. He said, without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Hebrews 7, 7. Now hear this, people of God. The voice you listen to is the voice that will benefit you. Your reaction to a man of God, that means God's reaction to you. <laughs> the widow of Zarephath in 1 Kings chapter 17, 9 to 16. Elijah came to her. He said, make for me first in these hard times. He said, this is my last meal. I will eat it and die with my son. And Elijah said, look, <laughs> I'm a man of God. Make for me First, a widow, if it's Nigeria, they'll say, this man of God is wicked. He does not even know I'm a widow. It's only in Nigeria, widows beg men of God. In the Bible, no widow beg man of God. They rather turn their captivity. In case you're a widow, you're me. Men of God, we are compassionate, we we'll give you. But please, your answer is not in what the man of God gives you. Open your windows as a widow. The woman looked at Elijah. There were two things that woman understood. She understood this is a man of God. And then she had faith in the word of God. And that provoked her harvest. Now let me tell you my personal testimony. I've been a tighter from the day I got to know the truth of tighter. I've never failed paying tight one day. I was giving offering, but I was not getting it like that. It was not coming that way. You know, you get today, you broke tomorrow. Most of you are like that. You get today, you broke tomorrow. You feel, boy, find me Sunday, they find you like that. <laughs> you, as church is now, you write small note to somebody, say, you know, transport to go to jail. You, know, you sleep in somebody's hand, they find you small transport. You come back again, say, we are serving God. And people beg, they quote scriptures more. Do you notice, church? Father, those who beg, they know all the scriptures. They say, God will bless you. He's, he's a faithful God. If you know all those scriptures, you're still begging. They don't know it. So, I, I was not satisfied with this getting today broken tomorrow. So, I stayed on the bed. After I was done reading the book, what I got was not inside the book. So, most of God will not give you what the person is. You know, I said, Holy Spirit, show me the secret of kingdom wealth. There will be something I don't know yet that I need to know. What is it I need to do outside my tithe offering? Then the voice of the Holy Ghost came. Who is blessing you? I said, of course, they would do it. Equal. He said, don't you know you can never prosper except you bless a soul into his life? I said, wow. Now listen, I'm standing before the Holy Ghost. All we had as my people in the house was 50 naira. 1997. And I said, I've known this secret. I put my hand in my pocket. I said, listen. My wife, no devil can make us poor. 
I won't tell you the rest. <laughs> Jesus did not explain everything in details. If you have ear, you hear here. That was where I broke the backbone of hardship. No economy can affect me. I broke it there. I said, I've got in my own secret. Everybody, you don't use another man's headlamp to drive your car. You must have your personal revelation in these hard times. No matter what anybody preached to you. When I got that light, I said, wow. Wow. And I have been on. I can't tell you details of it. You to find out your own. <laughs> Are you getting me? Yeah. But believe you me, it's, in, it's impossible. And cannot happen. So it's impossible. Can't. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Without a prophet, you will never make profit. Every hard time a prophet is sent, discover your own prophet. Everybody has a prophet. He said, believe, I know I believe God. He said, believe him God, he will establish you. I said, we want to tear that part of the Bible. He said, believe his prophet, so shall he what? So your prosperity is not possible without a prophet. Many Christians don't know that. In hard times, you must locate your prophet. And connect with the grace he carries. You don't go to your prophet for assistance. That's where we miss it. The widow of Serephat did not go to Elijah. Elijah just said, you are not feeding me. <laughs> you are not helping me. I'm, I've come to help you, the widow of Serephat. But make for me first. And when he spoke over her life, her heavens opened. Somebody's heaven will open right now. In the name of Jesus. If you believe it, the louder your amen, you have a testimony. Finally, number five. I think I'm not fast today. This I used to rush a lot when I come. So I, I try to control myself so I can finish. Live a life of patience. Live a life of what? That's the last one. In the school of seed time and harvest, patience is a core requirement. The day you plant your seed is not the day you harvest. Many of us, we even grumble. Oh, I gave last year a shiloh sacrifice. I paid tight. No, calm down. They are not wasted. Just be patient. Just be what? Patience is holding on to your desire harvest. Galatians 6 verse 9. Yeah, what the Bible declares. It said, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. My sacrificial lifestyle took some time before it started producing. Be patient. Be what? Patience is the ability to keep a good attitude while waiting. As a patience is the ability to keep a good attitude while waiting. While you're waiting for God to change your story, you are still who you are. You are serving God faithfully the way Bishop Abiyo said. You are not grumbling. You are just who you are. You are saying, God, I know you. Be patient. Because everybody who sows is bound to have an harvest. Even if you're hungry, you can't just say, today I plant corn. I go and uproot it because I'm hungry. No. The corn must get to maturity. So the seed you have been sowing is not a waste. Just be patient. If your cloud is full, it must empty itself. That's how covenant practice is. But let me say this. As I'm about to round off, you determine in hard times how your rain falls. Not God. If I want my rain to fall in 24 hours, I determine it. If I want my rain to fall for the lifestyle, some people they may never fall till they die. 
Let me close with this illustration. Very practical illustration. If in hard times I want my rain to fall, for instance, 1,000 grams makes what? One kilogram. I hope you know that. 1,000 grams make what? And I need one kilogram for my rain to fall because it said when your cloud is full, it will empty itself. If you read our father, most of you have the book, Breaking from the Hardship, you've read it, but I don't think you understood the book, self. That you have the book in your shelf does not mean you understand it. If I tell you something to humble you, what brought me out of poverty was a book I collected from somebody who worked with my father. I didn't have money, I photocopied the book from him. It's in a hardship, me, I'm out. <laughs> that you walk with a prosperous man doesn't mean you prosper. <laughs> I borrowed the book from him and photocopied it. Me, I came out. I couldn't afford the book, so I photocopied the book. And then the man who was working with my father is still struggling. Yeah, man. So that you're, you're, in, you're in living faith does not mean that uh, you prosper if you don't do what God what is teaching here. So my father collected it and left and he's showing us. So for you to be here, not you know, if you're in a prosperity plan, you're not prospering very soon, you begin to walk in bitterness. Because when people shout testimony, they say, don't mind that boy, he's a thief. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a thief, he's doing what you are not doing. So let me, let me close with this illustration. If you need 1,000 grams to get one kilogram, and you come in, you give one gram per service, that means you need 1,000 services for your rain to fall. That can be a lifetime. That's one of you have never had breakthrough. Now, if I come to a service and I give 500 grams, two services, my rain will fall. I'm going to understand it. If I give 500 grams this service, I give 500 grams. So, in two services, my room. And <laughs> that's why some new believers, they are going to fall quick. And if I give above 1,000 grams before the next service, it will be turned and rain. So you determine when your harvest comes in hard times. When the best time to give is now. To hold that this time is not to know how to walk in the covenant. Number one, I said be conscious of exemption status in Christ. Number two, embrace the law of factor. Number three, obey the law of seed time and harvest. Number three, understand the place of the prophet. And number five, live a life of patience. With these five factors, there are many factors in this time. I want to let you know that you will never remain the same. Good messages don't make good people. It's putting the message to practice that changes a man's story. Rise to your feet.